recording? Ready, ready. Okay. We're recording now? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're setting up for fillings, restorative, composites, all the same thing. So when you start um, as an assistant, you're going to start with anesthesia first. So you've got your needle or your syringe, your mirror, your cotton pliers, and your explorer and you're going to set up anesthesia here okay anesthesia starts off with the lidocaine um, here at search we start with the lidocaine and we start off with the long needle now the long needle is for mandibular blocks the short needle is for maxillary blocks, maxillary injections. So whichever your doctor prefers, you know, Dr. Grigo prefers long needle always. Um, topical, now the topical is placed per quad. So if you're working upper right side, lower right side, you know, if you've you got one on top and one on bottom, you're going to need one for top and then another one for the bottom one, okay? Just a very little, you know, scoop it up, kind of place it on there. Suctions, you get the suctions, well, the anesthesia, you can find it in the anesthesia drawer, including a couple of cotton rolls, four cotton rolls, and uh, a couple of uh, two by twos. Um, which I have two right here. Um, disposables, that's your suctions. You want your saliva ejector, your H uh, VE, your high volume evacuator, and you need an air water tip for yourself as well as for Dr. Sight. The patient. <laughs> patient will put the <laughs> air water. No, you would put the air water tip in before you put the patient in. But, um, but you can do it while the patient's sitting. Um, you need your hand pieces. You need a high speed hand piece. Got it. This one that we use is fiber optic. It has push button to push the um, burrs in and a country angle slow speed hand piece. Okay? And every doctor is different, but what she likes to start off with is for high speed, you got your 557. For your slow speed, you got your latch number eight carbine burr. So you can place those on there. Push the button. Push the burr in. Make sure it's locked in. You can go ahead and put that in there. Patience again. High speed. Cooperating. Cooperating with us. Latch. Slow speed burr. When you push the button, you're going to slide it in. You're going to twist it till it falls in. Release the button and release the button and it should go in. Yeah, there it goes. And you're going to put that on the slow speed motor. The motor slow should speed. be on the last hose, the far right one. And the high speed hand piece has the two metal ones that you can kind of put them on. Um, the one that we use has this is the slow speed burr, burr right there. It has that shape at the end. It's different from a high speed burr. Yes, it's different. You got it. So, the high speed hand piece, since it has that fiber optic on there, it goes to the motor that's called a coupler. And this one has a little light bulb on it. The other one, the other high speed that we have has the little um, four holes on the bottom that go into these there. That light is so helpful. Like, I know some high speed that don't that doesn't have the light. 
Um, other things that you need before you set up is um, you need to kind of get your all your materials ready for the filling material. Here we usually take out our vitrobon and it comes with a little spoon. Sorry, that's not it. it comes with a catalyst, a liquid and a powder. We get out our glass slab to mix the powder and well, the vitrobon. And we get a spatula and a die cow instrument to apply the vitrobon. It's usually one scoop and one little drop. Okay. You get out your articulating paper. If the patient has opposing teeth to bite on or if the filling is being done, then you take your articulating paper out. If they don't have anything opposing the tooth that you're doing the filling on, you don't have to take it out because they don't have an occlusion to bite on. So you do not have to waste articulating paper. Okay? You get out your etch. The tips are located in the restorative drawer. All these materials are located in the restorative drawer as far as like for the filling. Okay? You get out your damping dish. Your micro brush applicator for to apply the bond. You get out your bond, and the kind of bond that we have is universal bond. But any material that has bond written on it is usually for fillings. It's like the glue for the filling. Okay. You get out the flow flowable. It's a flowable composite material that we use. What does that do? It's just, for her, it, it's kind of like, um, it flows into the nooks and crannies of like the bottom of the filling before she actually starts working with the honey. Make sure that there's no bubbles, no holes, no voids when she's applying the honey in. So. Most dentists use it, most don't. You know, it just kind of depends on what your dentist likes, okay? Here, we kind of always use that, that stuff. Um, putty, we got these little cartridges, little capsules that have the putty material in them. Um, we have the applicator, the gun. Do they come with different sizes? They come different sizes. They have different colors, different shades. Um, the one that we purchased is this uh, Henry Shine brand, it's the purple brand, but you can kind of see that we have different colors in here that came from so different brands. So the doctor brands will notify you like what that. color, what size, or how mm, do you know? Just what color. Um, pretty much, as long as they're for the gun, it doesn't matter what size. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's bigger, it holds more material in it. If it's smaller, you know, usually the smallest I've seen in, uh, is this size here. But you've got um, different shades. So usually you can kind of let, ask the doctor what shade they think the filling should be. And then you just get out a couple of them. A couple of uh, cartridges or little capsules. Place them in there. Make sure that when you squeeze it, there's material in there. If it's empty, this part will kind of touch this. So discard it if it is empty. Okay? This one's good, this one's good. Before you start, it, it's wise to kind of let it like bleed it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Take off that tip so it's ready to go. Okay? We've got cotton rolls. Did I say that cotton rolls mm -hmm. to use? Mm -hmm. um, your floss. floss. Floss is important. Where do you keep floss at? Okay. In the restorative drawer. Uh -huh. And the light, the curing light. Okay. The curing light will be used for all of the material. 
to harden it except for the edge. So the true bond has to be light cured. The bond has to be light cured. Global has to be light cured. Every layer of the composite has to be light cured. The etch has to be rinsed off. Okay. With high so, speed. With high speed rinse. Um, now your your instruments that you have for composite. You have a spoon. Spoon is to take out caries, cavities. You have a composite instrument or a black instrument. Not this it. is for sculpting. You have a plugger or condenser for packing in the putty composite. And you have a scaler for cleaning up the the bond off the tooth. Articulating paper holder. And of course your spatula and your die count instrument. Okay. So when you sit sit the patient in, you want to get their file, you want to get their x-rays out, you want to get a consent form out for them to fill out and to sign to give us permission to do the form. Now we have different consent forms, we have oral surgery, you have to look for the one that says uh, composite, if we have any, maybe we have to make more. This one's for root canal, so we do have to get some more of the composite forms. While you're getting that out, you can set up your patient with the blood pressure machine. While that's going, we can kind of, you know, finish setting up here. Okay? All right. So when you begin to do the filling, the doctor's going to come in, put numbing gel in. Then she's going to anesthetize the area where the tooth is. Now for the bottom one, it's always going to be that the bottom one has that long nerve that it has to be injected like at the very back. Can you take a bite of me? I want to see if my teeth is messed up <laughs> by UK. <laughs> we are live. We're alive, yes. <laughs> On the top, you know, each individual tooth that has to be numbed up. So uh, she's gonna cut. She's gonna numb. When she's ready to start the procedure, start drilling. You're going to pick up your suction, your high speed suction. When dealing with the high speed hand piece, you pick up the high speed suction. One day she asked me to put the topical in at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Where exactly do you put it? Um, you have bottom. to put it in the back. Anywhere in the back? Like, do you have to feel yeah, it? Yeah, like pretty much up against the cheek. You know, like where that yeah, um, where the tooth is. Where the, where the tissue the kind of goes yeah. up. Like right there. Okay. Like that's where the nerve is. That's where she injects it. Now for the, for the top ones, it's going to be where that tooth is. Individual. You know, you just kind of put the top up there. You know, maybe around the tooth, especially if they're doing extractions. She likes to numb up the gum as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so she has, uh, as a courtesy to the patient, you can put the top bolt on the site where she's going to numb up the nerve on the very apical of the tooth, as well as around the gum itself. I just kind of slather it on, put it all over the place on that tooth. Okay. Um, so when she's ready to start drilling, you have your PPE on, you know, you got your goggles, you got your mask, you got your gloves, you got your lab coat, you know, um, kind of position yourself. Pull back here. Yeah, you also want the patient to sit all the way up on the head of this. More room for you to see. Yeah. Oops. And you can do this for the doctor. Then bring the the light over to you, all the way out here, and the the unit bring it over to her. She 
make a video for a lot of teams. You know? You have the bib on them already. You should have the bib on them from the beginning, but you know. You forget you can put it on on them at this time, you know. Have the yeah. Shiny layer underneath. Yeah, the shiny thank you so much. Shiny layer underneath. So there, there's Source a right water. way and a wrong way to put the bib on your patient. You got the shiny side and, uh, that goes up against that's the back side. Yeah. The matte side is the absorbable side. So you're ready with your high speed suction. Sometimes you can bend these to kind of lessen the force. Bend it like that. So you have your high speed suction on. And you have your O water tip on your other hand. So you're kind yeah, of you're retracting yeah. and kind of like retracting with this and kind of retracting with this as well. So whatever tooth it is, you're kind of right behind her. Not on top of the hand speed, the high speed hand piece, not in her visual. Let's do an example. I'm not too coming 18, she's doing it to come 18. How old are you? Okay. Remember. Okay. So November. Pull the cheek back. You pull the with, uh, with this. With both. You can use both to um, kind of pull it back. See, I don't have that luxury. So when she's drilling, little. you know, you go in there and you suction most of the water. Okay. If you see that it's pulling up in the back, you know, you can kind of take out the instruments or your suction. Grab the slow speed section or saliva ejector and kind of go in there and kind of, you know, suction it up. This is probably the part where volunteers have to practice, you know, with. You know, because I use my left hand. Every first. situation is kind of different where the hands, high speed hand pieces, you know, you kind of have to think about just giving her a good view of the cavity. You know, and uh, not really getting in her way or in her space. That's so, why she always rings the Angie bell. <laughs> probably. Angie. I don't know. Yeah, probably. That's some something that that takes practice when you're doing it. You know. So, so when you're ready to start filling, okay, all decay is out. You're ready to start filling. You know, if it's really close to the nerve, you know she's going to ask for a glass ionomer liner to kind of protect the nerve from the filling. That's where the vitrobon comes in, okay? So if it's close to the nerve where she needs a liner to protect it, she'll say, I need vitrobon. If it's, she takes out all the decay and she doesn't see the nerve or she doesn't like, you know, um, she doesn't think that the filling's really close to the nerve, She'll jump straight to the edge, okay? Sometimes they might use die cow too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Vitrobron is die cow, you is know, it? so, yes. So, um, either or, you know, she'll kind of let you know because she's in there, okay? You always want to have the area dry because all this stuff is moisture sensitive. So you're always handing her clean cotton rolls, dry cotton rolls to kind or you can put them in yourself. You can just like stuff them in there. You know, take it out the soggy one, just kind of put the other one in. Okay? So once you're you're done with your vitrobon, if you need it, then you go to the etch. Okay? Now this is very important for the patient not to move and not to close. Okay? If the patient's getting tired, you pull out like a bite block for them to bite on. Bite blocks are located in miscellaneous. We have one child size bite block, but usually the adult ones are sufficient. Okay, open it up, have them bite on it. Okay. So she applies the etch. Immediately after she applies the etch, you're gonna go in there and kind of suck out all the big stuff. Suction it, suction it right off the tooth. She's gonna go with her air water syringe and kind of like spray all that stuff off. Like 20 seconds. Yeah. Any edge left behind the bond will not take.
So she has to make sure that all the edge is completely off the tooth, completely gone. Once she kind of is satisfied that all the edge is off the tooth, you're gonna exchange wet cotton rolls for dry cotton rolls. Okay, now you're ready to bond the tooth. Okay, one to two drops of this stuff on your damping dish. You're gonna bend your little uh, micro brush. You're gonna hand her the micro brush and she's gonna dip it into the bond and kind of paint the tooth where she wants the bond to be placed, where she wants the filling composite material to be placed and stick. So she's kind of painting it on. Then she's gonna go with her air and blow the bond kind of like an even amount, even level. You like here to kind of hold its place, okay? Then you come out with your flowable. She's gonna apply a little bit of flowable where she needs it. You're gonna give her the like cure gun, or you can do it yourself. And you make sure when you have the like cure gun that it's on high and that it's 10 seconds, okay? Seconds are these two buttons. High, soft, is these two buttons, okay? This one's for high, this one's for low, this one's to increase the time, this one's to decrease the time. So 10 seconds. So you want it high needed. at 10 seconds. So go in there, zap it, put it back, mm. and you're ready for the, um, the putty, okay? Putty. So you hand it to her, she's gonna squeeze a little bit of putty onto that filling. Yeah, it's called putty composite. Um, once she she puts the composite into the tooth, you're gonna give her the plugger. If it's really big, you're gonna give her the plugger to push that material into the cavity. It can only be two centimeters thick each layer for it to get a complete cure. Um, all the way through. So when she pushes it in, she's going to ask you to have the bond so that she can lubricate her instrument so that she will pull the putty back out when she's pushing it in. Okay? You're also going to have a two by two in your other hand so that she can clean off the excess that she doesn't need. So she will keep doing that and once she gives you back the instrument, you grab the light here, hand it to her, she's going to zap it into place. Now we'll repeat that step, putty, bond, sculpt, until she's completely covered the, um, the cavity with new material. Okay? When she reaches more so toward the top of the tooth, she's ready to kind of use her composite um, instrument or her black instrument and this is to kind of sculpt more anatomy into the tooth and make it look like a tooth same thing she's going to use you know the bond to lubricate um, the two by two to clean her instrument sometimes she'll use her finger She'll dip her finger into the bond and kind of smooth it out with her finger. Not yet. Um, once she's light cured in and she's satisfied with what how the filling looks like, then she's going to um, do like the final shaping and make it nice and smooth, nice and pretty. You know, at that point she's going to reach for her high speed hand piece and she's going to pull out. Um, the diamonds to shape. Now the carbines are for cutting, the diamonds are for shaping, and the rubber um, polishers are for like polishing. Okay, so when she's doing any kind of drilling, remember you have your high speed suction, um, even if she doesn't do it with water, you don't have to be right up against the tooth with, if 
the, if there's no water involved, you can just kind of be like on the side to collect the dust because you know we don't want the dust to kind of linger in the air, too dust particles to linger in the air for us to breathe it in. The aerosol. Yes. So I kind of always have like the suction going, like on Especially the side. Especially when you have amalgam floating around. Yeah. Mercury. So um, when she's done with the shaping. If they have an opposing tooth to bite on, then you can or they have chick lighting paper. Uh, any high spots left on the filling will create uh, sensitivity on the tooth over time, so she has to make sure that the filling is pretty much even with all the teeth. Okay? Otherwise, the, the patient will be back with toothache. So um, she'll adjust. You keep like, giving her this, she'll adjust with her high speed. Adjust. After she's done with adjusting, like she's satisfied with where the, the, the tooth is touching, then she'll clean it up with a, um, she'll clean up the extra bond between the teeth because that stuff's really thin with the floss. The floss and maybe even the scaler to kind of flake off the bond that she didn't etch to the tooth. And once the patient is done, we bring them up. We say, Mr. So-and-so, we did your filling. You know, the doctor will kind of discuss the next thing on the treatment, and you will write it on a rattle slip. Patients, uh, the today's day, patient's name, next treatment. Who's going to do that next treatment? How much time is needed? And then the antibiotics and pain medicine should be used. Where do you get that information? How much time? This and one uh, from doctor. No. Okay. Um, the routing slips are located in your disposable drawer in here. And any other kind of um, things that may change of the setup is if it's a flossing cavity. Y'all will use a um, matrix band to place the filling to prevent the filling from sticking to the opposing teeth, like the uh, teeth next door. Um, here are the matrix bands in here. She um, uses the pedo band for premolars and the adult size band for molars. I usually ask her you know, do you need a pedo size? Do you need an adult size? But usually it's a given if it's a premolar, it's always a pedo. For molars, it's kind of like, okay, do you want a big one or small one? This one, if you place this, you can set it up on the actual um, matrix band holder if you know how to set it up. Um, it always is followed by a wedge. And the wedges are located in here as well. Be very careful opening this because if you open it, it can go everywhere. So I usually just kind of give her the box so she can just choose what size she's want, she wants. So um, as far as class fives, what Tuan was talking about, uh, class fives are cavities right up against the gum line. For those, um, she always requires a, um, this is a cord, a cord soaked in some hemodent to push back the gum, and the hemodent actually prevents it from like bleeding. So if the, gum, if the cavity is like kind of close to the gum or a little bit below the gum line, this is really helpful to kind of protect the gum and uh, protect it from the drill, prevent it from bleeding. Bleeding moisture is your enemy. So, yep. yes. any moisture that gets into your filling, the filling will not take. The filling will fall out. Um, extra tips. When you apply these tips onto your edge and your flowable, make sure that they're on there. Make sure that they're secured. Because if you only 
put them like at the tip and you begin to squeeze them, they will come off. And that will be a big mess. Um, anything else um, for the anterior teeth, facial cavities? Um, she likes to polish with the mandrel disc, which I located in the miscellaneous. And you got your, your mandrel holder. And you got your um, different grit of uh, wheels, starting from strong to fine grit. And you take out one of each. This is only for from anterior, from canine to canine, which she's polishing. Okay. Um, if it's a flossing cavity, she'll use her little finishing strips to smooth out the interproximal, which is the, you know, in between. If the filling falls in between, she'll kind of use this to kind of smooth it out. Um, if she can get her in her burrs in there to kind of smooth it out. Um, anything else? Um, this other material right here, um, this is more for crowns here. This is more for temporary filling here. And that's pretty much it. That completes the restorative. Okay. Okay.